my name is Elliot Butler. I'm with team 309. And in today's video, I'm going to be doing a practice round of Maxwell Park. Uh, this park is in normal Illinois. It's got a great disc golf course. This is going to be the home of the Battle of Bologna round one, as well as a location for a Ledgestone Flex event, as well as Ledgestone for some select divisions. So this is an awesome course. I'm going to take you on the practice round. Uh, you just saw my first throw. I'm just going to explain the shot to you a little bit. So hole one is about 820 feet uh, and it basically encapsulates the entire course. The hole is basically right in front of you even though it's 820 feet and there's lots of wind as you can probably hear as well as uh, some danger. So basically off the tee if there's any wind at all and if you can't get 400 feet of accurate distance basically all you want to do is just chip as forward as you can with your straightest disc possible in whatever wind you have basically the only way of birdieing this hole is by throwing like a 450 foot shot to about uh to where the manhole cover is i'll show you that in a second and then from there just either throw in a big forehand or a big backhand but really if you're stuck anywhere about 400 feet from the pin you have no real shot at the basket so Basically, this is a great one to play for par. This is by far the hardest one on the course and a really, really good one to start out with. So basically, just get your par, move on to hole two. So once I've done playing this hole, I'll show you the rest of the course or all 11 holes that are available so far. And uh, when they put in the next seven, I'll definitely make sure to post those as well for you to see. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's helpful for you. Uh, yeah, let me finish the hole. Okay, so here's my first lie. This traveled probably close to 380, 390 feet, and I'm about 400 or so from the pin. But if you notice, there is no real gap for me. So basically, you see this OB is on the left side, it kind of curls around to the left once you get past these trees. Sorry, I went out of frame. So basically, left is safe once you get past these trees. Also, once you get past those trees and to the left, you get a nice clear shot at the basket. This is how I recommend you play the hole. Just try to get as far as you can straight without bringing in the factor uh, of possibly going left OB or right OB. Just stay in the fairway, take your second shot and try to pitch beyond those trees. Um, you got plenty of room up there to bail out to the left if you need and then just take your upshot. So I'll show you what I mean. So hole number two provides some relief after playing the very difficult hole one. At only 282 feet, uh, there are lots of options to get to the basket. You have the high forehand to the left side if you're a righty, or a high backhand to the right side uh, if you're feeling adventurous. Me, I like to take the, uh, the low right cap, get it to hyzer and skip. But watch out, there is a stream behind the basket. If you end up in there though, You'll be able to save your par uh, with a 20 footer or so. All right, we're to hole three, 399 feet, basically dead straight. Uh, the best bet is to throw a fast fairway that's gonna flip up for you or a distance driver that's gonna hold very straight the entire time. However, you don't wanna get too far left or too far right, there's lots of danger. So if there's lots of wind, especially, just lay up to the gap and take your par.
Pull number four, 348 feet, slightly uphill. Normally you have a tailwind on this hole coming off the interstate, and that combined with throwing uphill means that you'll want to throw one of your flippier discs on this hole. If you have a headwind, go for something a little bit more stable, but usually you'll have a tailwind. So the disc I go with normally is a sidewinder, but I could guess that a uh, Valkyrie or maybe a Maverick would also work very well. All right, hole five is a 315 foot purely downhill shot. There are lots of options here, especially for the backhand. You can go big hyzer, or you can go kind of straight at it, which is what I normally do with my rat. It really doesn't take a lot of power to get down here. The thing is just getting in position. I have a decent lie, but this is a, one of the easier holes. So uh, try not to go something too fast or else you'll probably be really deep. Go low speed, low glide, and you should land about pin high. ton of trees on the left side of the fairway making it where you don't really have a shot up the middle the best shot in my opinion is to go hyzer right of the pine tree by the blue basket if you get behind it you'll kind of skip towards the pin something like a firebird or a thunderbird works perfectly for me Hole number seven is 365 feet, just straight ahead as so many of these holes are. That being said, a lot of times you get a headwind coming off the interstate and throwing downhill, trying to get something to flip up straight is often going to burn over. So in my opinion, the best shot on this one is to push the pine tree here right off the tee with a big hyzer and get it to miss all the trees and spike near the basket. Exactly like that. Here we are at hole number 15, or what will become hole number 15. This is the second of the, par, the three par fours that are currently uh, on the course right now. They're working on clearing out the brush to our left over here um, to accommodate some wooded holes and another par four. Uh, this one though, just about 650 feet, you shoot the gap. You wanna end up either far to the right or far to the left, just off this gap. Uh, either way, we'll get you a somewhat open look at the basket. Um, but if you don't make the gap, you're gonna be scrambling. A par on this hole is actually pretty solid. Uh, so if you're just playing it safe, pitching up to the short tee pad isn't a bad idea over there on the left side. Um, another option is a big spike hyzer uh, on the right side just to get past the gap, because really this is a hard, uh, hard three to get if you're gonna try to birdie it. Um, and it's one that can easily turn into a six or worse if you get off the uh, fairway in some way. So playing it safe, uh, just, just trying to get the par on this one.
That should be pretty good. It's on the right side. I'll be able to see the basket from there. So where I landed is pretty prime. You have a dead straight approach to the basket. If you're on the left side of the fairway with a hyzer, or if it hyzers out, you'll be looking at a forehand into the green. From here, you could just throw something dead straight. So a forehand might get over here if you're throwing a forehand off the tee, but really you wanna be looking to throw a turnover off the tee to get up to this point and be able to throw something straight into the green. Right, here we are at hole number 16, 366 feet. Again, it looks right there. It looks so close and also just requires a straight shot. That being said, it's a pretty narrow tunnel and there's actually lots of airspace up to the right. So what I would recommend, especially because this hole often has some sort of tailwind, is to put it out wide to the right, throw a big hyzer and have it spike before it gets to the basket. You don't want to go too deep because there are pine trees back there that make the putt very obstructed and very hard to get to the basket. It looks like I did exactly what I told you not to do, so I'm gonna throw a second shot, so hopefully you have a better idea of what to do. That one's a bit short, but that's a better example of what you should do on this hole to get yourself in position to birdie it. This is where my second shot ended up. I'll show you in a second after I've taken these putts where my first shot ended up so you know exactly where not to go when you play this course. So this lie isn't as bad as I thought it would be, but if you look, there's lots of trees along the side and if you're a right-handed putter, especially getting it to go back to the basket, it's gonna be really tough to do at putting speed. <laughs> okay, maybe it's not hard, I don't know. Land here if you want, maybe it works, I don't know. This is hole number 17. A couple things to note about this. A lot of times they'll have a headwind, uh, which is kind of a good thing because the basket is tucked off to the right. So if you're someone who's throwing a turnover, the headwind is actually gonna help your disc turn over and you might be able to stable up a little bit to something with lower glide, which is gonna help you a lot. Second thing to note is there are lots of trees in the fairway. Uh, the best line is basically straight at it. You can't really hyzer around any of the trees like you could on some of the other holes. So the best bet is to throw something straight and let it turn. Or if you're a big forehand guy, you might be able to pull this one off as well. One quick thing to note is the tee pad is slightly uphill, so plan on taking a different run up or else you're going to early release it and you do not want to get to that side of the fairway uh, if you early release a disc. Plus, it's hard to hit a gap like this if you early release a disc. So I totally shamed that one, but uh, there, is a, there is kind of a gap on the right side if you wanted to go full hyzer at it, but it's hard to hit. I wouldn't recommend it because there are lots of trees over there, so going straight at it is a better idea.
As you can tell, my putt needs work. All right, here we are, hole 18, 651 feet. Normally, with this hole, you have a tailwind or a right to left crosswind, both of which are gonna make your disc act a little bit more stable. But that is okay because you wanna get beyond the short tee pad on the left side of the fairway if you can, because then it opens up your second shot to go to the gold basket. Basically, you wanna pull out your max distance driver to see how far you can get it. If you're up by those pine trees on the left side of the fairway, you should be golden for the birdie. Just like that. So this is what it looks like if you end up on the right side of the fairway. Notice that you've got a lot of saplings plus the big pine trees in your way if you're trying to go to the gold basket. That's why you want to be on the left side so that you can get a simple hyzer into the green and it's not a problem. This is a tough shot to pull off for basically anybody. All right, so that concludes my practice round. I hope that this was both enjoyable and helpful for you. If you are going on to play Maxwell Park, definitely check it out, it's a lot of fun. Unfortunately, I won't be able to play the Battle of Lono, but to all those of you who might be, I wish the best of luck and have a good tournament. This is a really fun course. Uh, I think that you'll enjoy it a lot. So thanks for watching this video. Do like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. So if you like this format, definitely let me know and I'll do this at more local events um, or just before local events if you are playing this course blind or if you are thinking of playing a course blind, I should say. So anyway, thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.